So we found a pretty good size standing dead tree here. And we're gonna do our best to sort of hand mill it into some usable timber. Yeah. All right, so now I've got a little cutting bench going. Take out the chalk line and we're gonna snap a line along this log. We've got the, uh, the chalk line. And so I've just made a little notch there and then I'm gonna cut the rest. We've got this sort of four inches thick and this is gonna be our first cut. And then once the cut's made, we'll measure for the next and the next. We should get two rough sawn two by fours out of this piece. Chris is going to do his absolute best to just freehand it, and uh, hey, it's a skill. <laughs> That's right, practice. How'd we do? It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> now there's a few spots, like obviously. Yeah, I'll get rid of it. <laughs> Just like you did. Yeah, same as here. It's not as bad on the piece we're keeping, but it's still there. Yeah. We've got the power to actually mill these smaller boards. Oh yeah. See, and I was thinking that if you let the tip sit in the existing, like straight cut, then you take the back, like you know, the middle of the chain and you just watch that as you go and the tip will take care of itself, but it kind of doesn't, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, mean. I think it would if you could manage to hold the back perfectly straight, but it's like the slightest twist in the chainsaw mm -hmm. starts turning it off. Right. Whereas the twist in the chainsaw straight up and down, you're only, like, you're, yeah. it's not multiplying as much. Yeah. So. You're not really looking for perfect lumber. No. You, you know, deal with that when you get home, but it, it obviously, this is our first attempt at this. It's promising, but it's also oh, yeah. like, okay, there's there's skill involved. Oh yeah. This is the money cut, he's gotta get it just right. Looks good. Wow. Getting better every time. Okay, so this edge is now like we have a straight edge. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make an attempt to utilize this little guy. So it's designed to go along a two by six or you can narrow it up. Uh, I'm just gonna sort of follow this edge and let this edge go wild. So we're gonna see if this thing actually works. Right there? Yeah, sure. Color good right there. Sure. Chris did a phenomenal job on those final two cuts. So we've got a nice edge on our uh, two by four there. You can see down it's pretty, pretty good. And so I'm just going to do my best to run this saw. Again, I'm not going to actually pinch this because this edge isn't perfect. That edge is, you know, perfecter. So I'm basically just gonna run it along this edge and sort of slide it along to see if that assists my freehanding just enough that we can get some really nice boards out of this. Yeah. Uh -huh. 
What do you think, Chris? Looks that pretty looks, good. That looks like an Alaskan mill. Yeah. Like that is absolutely beautiful. And now we have this surface to go on, man. That is amazing. And that was without anything to start with. Like we made our own two by four. Yeah. That is, uh, that is smooth. Oh, that's beautiful. I think, Obviously the next step is let's put that on your saw so we can see what 60 cc's does with this whole ripping business, but not bad. Well, the chain's different too. Yeah, because that, that's a, it's a narrow kerf chain on my saw versus the, the Timberwolf. Well, and yours so... is semi chisel and mine's full chisel. Right here, it's rounded slightly. Ooh. That's very hot. But yeah, so that's slightly rounded. Whereas on this chain, the where it bites right there is uh, totally 90 degrees so that would be considered a full chisel versus a semi chisel that rounded edge gave us this cut which is a really like it sort of almost just self centers itself and it's really nice and smooth so let's do another cut with the timber wolf and see how that chain behaves neither one of these chains are for ripping but that'll be for a future video if we decide that we're going to come back and do more of this we can experiment with what an actual like ripping chain can do this is from that full chisel chain and then that is from the semi chisel chain Let's see here maybe the chalk line i should put in the box and drill if you look up it is really coming down Oh yeah, you can actually see the rain on film. But we're just standing right tight underneath one of these trees. And it's completely dry down here. Uh, we're just hiding under a tree. Yeah, these things sting. <laughs> I'm gonna switch the camera around the other way so you guys can see. There's some hail. Yeah, and some of it's getting to be pretty decent. Yeah, some of them are like marbles. Yeah? Yeah, yeah definitely, uh, definitely stings. Yeah, some of them are like, ow! That sort of big. <laughs> You're just knocking me <laughs> As big as your fingertip kind of thing. <laughs> oh dear. Well, anyways, we're definitely not moving for a little while. Oh yeah. Oh wow, it's. Oh, oh yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Hug the tree. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Holy. What the shit? Well, usually the hail gets smaller when it gets more intense. I don't feel like I've been almost knocked out yet. Oh, it stings. It does sting. <laughs> Why did we run for the tree instead of the car? It literally started out of nowhere. Yeah, it took about, what, five it, to ten seconds? There was, there was big hailstones before there was rain. Yeah. Anyways, check back with you in a minute, maybe. Yep, this is like an absolute, like, tropical downpour. So, life's decisions that have led us to this point, Chris. How are you feeling? Ah, poor life decisions. <laughs> poor life decisions. Ow. <laughs> you guys with the waterfall coming off your hat. <laughs> Oh. Well, it's warm in here. Yeah. It's loud. And the windshield is covered in leaves. <laughs> oh. Whew. Well, 
This is no longer a video about harvesting lumber. <laughs> but we learned a little something for next time. Uh, bye. <laughs> so you can find it to get people. Bye, YouTube. Bye, YouTube.